Well, hello and welcome back to Page Chewing Comics and Manga Pick of the Week. This is episode number 48. We're just two away from the big 5-0. This is a podcast <laughs> where we talk about primarily new single-issue comics. Sometimes we go a little bit further back in time. My name is Mike. I'm back here once again with Steve. We'll be sharing what we read this past week, including our pick of the week. If you're joining us for the first time, we are back into the weekly poll thing and also finding new comics that appeal to us for whatever reason. So Steve, I just want to, as we have been doing, I just thought I would ask how your week was, comics or otherwise. Uh, not too bad. Busy as always, mm-hmm. but uh, you know, I'm, I'm starting to, to realize that there's a lot of bad comics out there. <laughs> And maybe not objectively bad. I just, I shouldn't say not objectively bad, just not for me. (laughs) Is that the the nice way to say it's just not for me? Like they're, they're fun. I'm sure someone out there enjoys them. Someone must be enjoying them because they keep making them, but it's just not my cup of tea. Yeah. And I think that's what this whole endeavor has been about is to kind of get, kind of get back out there and, um, I, I, I do have that feeling sometimes as well, but you know, sometimes you just never know. And for whatever reason, I, I do like to try to give things a chance that might be a little bit out of my comfort zone, maybe, but maybe, but you've been doing this longer. So. Not that much longer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's been, it's been a journey for sure, but how has your week been? Oh, not bad. Um, yeah, I, I, I didn't read as much as you. I, I, I had one, the very last comic that I read I was excited about, which will be my pick of the week. I won't share too much, but otherwise I was not feeling too great. Um, I think, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I am I am enjoying a few series and just some of the same authors that, that we have been covering. Um, I'm finding that, you know, in some cases... Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, they're like I'm reading things like that are not what, for example, like crime or horror, which I may not have been as interested in recently. Um, but I, I think my go-to always is kind of like maybe sci-fi or fantasy, or I do like horror a little bit. I did like it yeah. a lot when I was younger, and then I kind of pulled away. So um, I think we have. There's one, there's something that is this very nostalgia based, which I'll talk about, which I, I, I may be a sucker for it as well. <laughs> that might be something <laughs> to do with getting old or whatever, older, but you know, anyway. Yeah. I, I had a little bit more time this week because the holiday, I was taking it easy at work, not working as many hours. Mm-hmm. So had a little bit more time. So I ended up reading a couple more than usual. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, we're almost at 50. That's kind of wild. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of wild. It's all right. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess I'll kick us off. Uh, the first one this week, which was in contention for the for my pick of the week, but didn't quite make it, was Drawing Blood number three. We are continuing to follow Bookman and learning more about his past, what he's done, what he's experienced, his regrets. You know, this is a character that I think all of us can relate to, and it's it sounds like it's pretty it, it's a retelling of what the creator went through for uh, T and M T M N and T. And I think we can all kind of see ourselves in this character where they, they have they're well intentioned. He's trying to do the right thing, is he's trying to make the most of this experience because he created the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. He's, he's trying to do the right thing, but he always manages to screw it up and make things worse and just piss everyone off. And I think we can all kind of relate to that in some way. Just can't get out of our own way sometimes. And can't, he just can't escape his past. Even though he, he's trying to do the right things, he just can't get out of his past. And yeah, I think that for that reason, I really enjoy this story. I mean, I, I wonder how true to life it is. But it's been a, a really great story. It, there wasn't a ton that happens in this in this issue, but the art continues to shine. The art fits the style of the story really well. 
this is a very, very good book. After I've been complaining about bad books, I start us off with, with a good book. But yeah, it's a fantastic series so far. That's great. I have one question. Um, when you say he's trying to escape his past, is he is alluding to the success of as, as a writer? So it's about the character as a writer kind of thing? I'm trying yeah, to break so away he, he, from... Yeah, so he created the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. He, it was a big success. He sells it, trying to kind of yeah. help himself and other people that were working with him. And it turns out that who he sold it to just makes it into a bigger property, and it just goes on to just become this cultural phenomenon. And he kind of squanders what opportunities he had. So he's trying to kind of recapture that creative spark that created the, the turtles and and kind of get that fire back but he just can't seem to get things right no matter how hard he tries and yeah i just think it's it's been a fantastic story so far yeah that's really cool i'm interested um and the title's kind of throwing me but i wonder if there it's about his blood being drawn as, as a result of all the the process of what's happened with his create, you know, his creation. Um, so I'll, I'll kick off my, my list, which is not a huge list. I only, as I said, I only have four uh, issues to talk about this week, but um, my first one is creature from the black lagoon lives with an exclamation mark at the end. Um, and this is, I believe it's, I, th- I think it's a four part series, but now I'm not totally sure. Um, I believe, so this is issue number three. Um, and one of the writers is Ram V as well as Dan Waters. My first time reading something by Ram V. Um, and, uh, I, I will say, you know, I'm, I am, uh, I'm enjoying the artwork. There is like, so there's a few panels, like full, full page panels or so, um, where, you know, the, the, the main character, Kate, she, uh, goes underwater quite a lot. It happens often. <laughs> and obviously <laughs> that she then runs into the creature or, or if, if you can only imagine. Um, but, when there, the artwork is very grainy and atmospheric, and, and I really appreciate that. It's it's in contrast to, you know, how, you know, she is then you know, on on the land. The artwork is totally different for people that are kind of terrestrial, if you will. So I just wanted to make a quick comment on what I appreciated. I will say that the story, you know, this is issue three, so it's just kind of continuation of her trying to track down this bad guy, this kind of killer bad guy, and she'll do whatever she can. And I think like her background is she's a reporter, but she really goes, uh, she takes a a right turn, you know, just a little bit out of character from what I felt. Um, And and I think she's like trying to, to, you know, to, to kill this, this bad guy. And so, I mean, it, it's, and, and then of course the creature is there and then there's other people trying to, to, to get the creature. This is all taking place in the Amazon, which is very different, you know, setting from the original series. And I will just say that there was a, there was a reveal at the end, which is, you know, this is, this is universal monsters, right? So we got to get some monstrous kind of reveal and it, it and I and it was fine, but it was a little bit strange for me. I won't say what it is because we're in issue three, um, and I'm hoping that it'll make sense in number four. Anyway, I <laughs> wasn't super excited. I, I did start off with some positives um, with hmm. the artwork, but um, the story just seemed to be a little. It's a little bit formulaic, and then there's like some very strange uh, reveal, as I said, of one of the characters. That just didn't make sense to me, but maybe I just missed something. <laughs> I wonder if, if this, if, if uh, kind of the classic monsters, like the creature from the black lagoon, if, if they're, if you almost expect kind of a run by the numbers kind of story, if it's, if they don't want to take too many chances, they wanted to be a little bit formulaic to be 
kind of a comfort food. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I, I, I think that does make sense a little bit, but why not try to, to change things up a, a little bit? Yeah. But I, I, I get your point. Yeah. But no, with Rom V I'm surprised cause there's a book that I'll talk about later that he's writing and I hear his run on detective comics is like really, really good. So hopefully things will not be as formulaic. Yeah. So uh, the next one for me is King spawn 35. I really tried to get into spawn after 350, after spawn 350. And I've kind of fallen off a lot of the titles. I'm down to King Spawn and Spawn, but it's been hard. Uh, issue 35 has really great artwork. I love the artwork in it. It is uh, very haunting. If it's kind of the Spawn kind of you know style, so in this one, Al tries to make a deal to protect Granny, who's still alive after 30 years. She was a Granny in the 90s. She's still a Granny. <laughs> I'm not sure how fast time works, but. She's old. Uh, but it, So he's trying to make a deal to protect Granny. And that's pretty much it. I mean, there's not a whole lot that happens. I've noticed with the Spawn books, not a lot of things happen in these books. There's not a lot of movement. It seems very slow and methodical. It's very surface level. It doesn't really get too deep. It doesn't get too far into the psyche of the characters or into Al. And I, I seem to remember back you know, back in the first hundred issues or so that it was a little bit more introspective with Al and maybe that it's just evolved from there. It's not really what it's exploring anymore, but a little bit disappointed. It seems very kind of boring. I just, I, I'm having really, I'm having a lot of trouble getting into these books, the very small bits each issue, but I love the artwork. So I'm going to give it another issue or so. And then decide what to do, but I've fallen off all of them except for King Spawn and Spawn. So, yeah, it's been, uh, it's been something I've tried. I've really tried. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the, uh, the next one I want to talk about really quickly is uh, remote space. Number one. So in this one in the future, earth has fallen apart. And events, I won't give too many details, but events lead humanity to embrace technology and to survive, they have to have, be augmented. So they are augmented by, by technology to survive the environment on Earth. So there's a lot more to it than that. That's just a very quick, too long, didn't read explanation. There's a lot of exposition in this one, a lot of detail, a lot of things that are happening. So far, it's okay. I really like the the artwork, uh, the, and, and I was kind of on the fence with this one, but at the end, the creator Cliff Rathburn has a letter thanking readers for giving it a try. It's a he, he's doing everything on this book. What what usually takes a few people, he's doing all by himself, and he got me with that letter. <laughs> I was like, okay, I'll stick around. It's only four issues, and. It's well, it's off to a okay start. I'm hoping that it'll be something exciting. So far, it's it's fine. It's not bad. It's just it didn't really grab me the way I would I want a first issue to grab me. But we'll see how it, well, kind of where it goes from here. Yeah, I read that one as well like, a couple of weeks ago, maybe. Um, yeah, issue well, number our episode number forty six. I couldn't like find my notes on it, but I had a, I, I, I think I, I think I remember reading that letter and I, I, I am going to try anything where it's just the one creator. I just, I won't say anything, but I will, I'm much more likely to give it a chance. And when I, when I saw that, I was like, okay, I'll, I'll give it a shot. And I'm glad that it sounds like you're going to continue. I'm not sure if, if I'm going to, but I'd like to hear then from you how it, kind of pans out <laughs> i'll be the kidder in the coal mine <laughs> <laughs> yeah so another uh, another one that we we both read um is ultimate spider-man number six by marvel uh which we could we could guess but <laughs> um 
now we have the we have, so the thing that I complained about last time was we you know we had the different artist. Um, I think just I really appreciated Mark. Uh, it's Mark. His name is Marco Chichetto, I believe. Just really appreciated his work in the first two or is it three issues, and so he's he's back, and just the quality is um, for me. I'm not, and I'm, I'm not trying to dig on the previous artist, but it's just uh, uh, in, improved so, uh, substantially for me. Um, so I, I did not make a comment when you said <laughs> for the King Spawn, there's just not a lot happening. There's not a lot happening here either. And sometimes it's okay. Like, I think like this series so far is taking its time, but they seem to go back to a lot of the same kind of stuff. It's just, as you've said, but also, I mean, this is already anybody who's read issue one or already kind of knows like this is a different take on spider-man but what's interesting is that he keeps like revealing his identity and Mm -hmm. who he is and and i'm just like you're putting people in peril um and i know that i'm sure that's going to be an issue because it keeps coming up but that is mentioned that comes up again here in in a bigger way um of course we also have this we do have a battle it's probably it's not a it's a smaller percentage of the, or I should say, a fight with Kingpin. Um, some weird stuff going on with him. I, I I wanted to maybe look up more about him, but I I, I neglected to do so. But um, I'm just not. Again, I've, I've said this before. Um, I like it okay. I was a Spider-Man per- fan when I was younger. I'm just not sure if we're getting enough bang for our buck here. And we've, I've given it six issues, but like I said, the interior art has, has improved. It, and I thought the ending was just kind of like, ho oh, hum, you know, it's just like, okay. Um, which anyway, we don't always need to have some big smash bang ending, but I don't know. <laughs> just kind of like skipped it or something. I just, I don't know just turn the page and didn't really think about it again. It doesn't sound so good. I think that's a good way to, to, to describe it as you turn the page and you didn't think about it again. Yeah. Pretty forgettable. And I've never seen a kind of response from finding out that someone you love and you know very well as a superhero. It seemed like a, it just seemed it's very strange. No one seemed to be surprised at all that he's a superhero and that he's wearing a costume and flying around the city having fights with supervillains. It seemed very weird. I just don't think it's for me. (laughs) I really wanted to like this book. I really liked the first two issues. I was surprised I liked them. I just, yeah. It's, like you said, it's retreading kind of old ground and just not for me. (laughs) It's not for me. But I'm sure a lot of Spider-Man fans out there who, who follow Spider-Man and the Marvel Universe will really like it. It's just I just don't have interest in it. Not when there's so many other books to try. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just think that slot will be taken by by something else. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think we feel the same on this one. Yeah. But I have to say, I, I, I am known now I've known myself, having done this podcast with you a while, I, I have gone back on it and just been like, hmm, okay, I'm having a rough week. Maybe I'll just grab it. So it might might have, for me, it might I might check it out. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't say I'll, I'll never try it again, but it'd have to be a really, a really quiet week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but who knows? So I'll go through uh, the next couple really quickly. So I have a sp- I have a soft spot for the World Tree series. When I decided to start recording the podcast, I went to the local shop and it's the first book I pulled off the shelf and I it just caught my eye. I liked, like the cover, the premise was really cool. I liked, I, I just kind of, so I dove into it because for the podcast and because I, I wanted to find a book that I would really enjoy. And so for that reason, I have a, a soft spot for the series. It's very up and down. 
some issues I really like. Some of them are just okay. There's there's different groups of characters, and there's one or two groups that I really enjoy reading about. The rest of it, I just don't care. I'm just I'm like lost. It seems very overdone. I, I just can't get into it. And so when half the book is very uninteresting, I just I, I lose interest in it. And there's some great ideas, I think, but it just seems like it's just getting in its own way. And I think I might be, I might be thrown in the towel on this one. Maybe when it's finished, I'll, I'll read it in one go or something. But it's just, yeah, I don't know. I just, there's, there's too much of the book that I just don't enjoy. And I just kind of skim because I, I'm just lost. I just don't care. And the characters aren't interesting. And it's just not enough for me to continue, unfortunately. Yeah, I, but it's that. Um, did you cover World Tree number one in your first week? I think it was. I think I picked up number two or three, okay. and then I, I went and bought the first few issues for the podcast. So, but it's the first book I grabbed. Like it's the first one that I oh that looks cool, and yeah. I'm looking for something new to to read. And I I think it started off okay. There's really great ideas. It just it's not coming together. Yeah. Uh, so really quickly, I'll talk about When the Blood Has Dried, number three. This is by Mad Cave. The first issue in this series, I, I think it, it seemed to be a very bleak and dark story, like a revenge tale. And I dig that kind of thing. I like bleak and brooding, and that's my thing. But it, since then, it's kind of calmed down, and it the story isn't light, but the, the tone of the story is kind of light. And the anticipation that was built in the first issue especially kind of lost. It didn't really capitalize on the, on the tension and anticipation it built on the very first issue that it kind of set up. It just seems like it was a missed opportunity for that. And I haven't, it, it's, it's just been okay. It hasn't really grabbed me yet. So I'm going to give it another issue or so. See if I sit at the store, I'll pick it up, but I'm not dying to read the next issue, but I'm hoping it, something happens with it. I was trying to get myself off of the mute here <laughs> for the delay. I just checked out the, the cover art. It's really uh, appealing to me. I don't think I came across that one. I probably would have fallen for it. Um, looks, looks really, I don't know. Just sort of, I, I haven't checked out the interior art, but it's one, another one of those that I was like, hmm. From what you said at the beginning, I was like very intrigued. So, yeah, the the interior art's good too. The art's good. I think it's like a fantasy story with a typical kind of cast of characters, like a, a guild and a village and a, a tavern. And so it it's but what it set up was nice. It just it it's not running with it. Yeah. Um. So I actually I have two more to cover um and then i will so I'll, I'll do one and then get to my pick of the week so the next one i have is called self-help which is by image comics and i gotta say the the author owen king uh, i believe son of stephen king unless it's somebody else um appealed to me and uh there's a co-author of jesse kellerman with artwork by mariana ignazi um, and yeah, I, I didn't know what to expect. Um, it has just kind of a, I hate to say generic, um, you know, color palette and, 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 um, and the artwork is, is, is fine. It's, it's, it's good. It's, it's okay. It's nothing for me. It's nothing special. Um, but I guess it's really about the story for this one. And we're looking at, Two, two guys who are like doppelgangers. They look alike. One is this self-help speaker, like guru. He kind of like tells people to get off their ass and I don't know, he like insults them. Um, I'm trying to think of, there are, I guess there are self-help speakers that do that. Does Tony Robbins yell at people? Or, I, I don't know. Um, I watched, a, I think I watched a Netflix documentary of, 
but uh but then the other doppelganger is is a, it's just like a regular uber driver um and so that's kind of an interesting premise um you 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 know you you, you feel you feel sorry for the, the the uber driver whose name is uh jerry and then the self-help guy is is darren and so he gets recognized as people want to do a selfie with him and things like that. Anyway, long story short, they do kind of run into each other and some, something very interesting happens. Um, uh, the, you know, the story is, it's, it's okay. It's, it's nothing that really struck me. Um, but I liked how it kind of wrapped up in the end. I, 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 it's sometimes it, it, it had like a cinematic feel, I think. So I think people will appreciate that. Um, including like on the, after, uh, behind the, the first cover you have, like, it's like a movie poster. I thought that was kind of, that was kind of cool. Um, I don't have too much other kind of strong feelings, but I'll, I'll, we'll see where this one, where this one goes. I think if you pay them enough, they will yell at you. <laughs> Okay. I, 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 that this guy does seem to be of that ilk. Like he's huge and, you know, um, he's like, yeah, but something happens to him at the end. I, he may or may not be coming back. And so you can mm-hmm. imagine when you have people that look exactly like there's a great opportunity for, um, for the Uber driver for Jerry, we don't know exactly what's going to happen, but I can kind of guess what's going to happen next. Um, So, well, I'm curious to see what happens. Um, And then uh, for my pick of the week, I have Gromit's number two. Um, And that is, that's again by Image Comics. And we have Rick Remender once again, but he is a co-writer of Brian Bussain, who's a, who's a comic, a stand-up comic, an actor. Um, And, so this this uh, this is really just so far. It's just kind of a slice of slice of life nostalgia feel, and takes place in you know these are these are kids. I don't know if you'd call it com- coming of age because it's just kind of like you know young people in high school in 1985. And I gotta say the artwork on the first page is just uh was just working for me it's very detailed lots of just rocking the nostalgia stuff the references like the kid has posters on the wall of you know the uh, black flag and suicidal tendencies and he's got you know a slurpy cup and anyway it's just you just i'll 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 just say like I, i just was like i just found myself staring at it for a while and this, you're just kind of taking it in. And there's a lot more like that throughout this, um, this issue. So I just wanted to give you a taste from that first page. Um, you've got all kinds of references, like even like a scene where they're, they, they go past this like video VHS rental store. <laughs> it's just like, it's just pretty funny. And just people having conversation about horror movies. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't, I mean, it's not, the story is just kind of like people kind of goofing around. Um, but the two characters, Rick and Brian, where the, you know, they're like skateboarding guys. They, they do meet some girls and that's when it, for me, it became less realistic because they actually talked to them (laughs) because in (laughs) high school, I was not as successful with that, but, um, you know, you know, uh, but the, the three girls are also skateboarders and they're go by the name of Jen, Jen and Jen. Um, nice. So it's kind of funny, and I—I I, I mean, it's just—it's just funny, and it's not the—the the, the comedy isn't like too much. Like, I have to say, when I finished reading this, I was like, I actually wanted to reread it, you know. Um, hmm. And I did go kind of go back and went through it again. It's just—I don't know. It's just—it's just, it's just uh, well done. There's like, I don't want to keep going on and on, but I do. I really did like this a lot, and. I'm um, looking forward to, to, you know, see where it goes. Jeez. But I don't know if it's High for praise. you, but <laughs> it, 
it was it was like I the other ones were were okay, but this one I was like, oh, I just really really enjoyed myself. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I was on the fence with that one. If it'll be <laughs> something I would enjoy or not, is it? Is it funny? Is it? What's the kind of the tone? Is it? Is you said it's like a slice of life coming of age story. It's definitely funny, but it's not like there's not like jokes. It's just like 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 there's a scene in here where the two skateboarding uh, friends they I think they they go to a Taco Bell, and then like the guy <laughs> at the counter is just has. He's got a f- kind of funny face and uh, just the, you know, what he said, well, the gentleman also be having one of everything. It's just like, you're just kind of <laughs> like, that's not really a joke. It's just, you know, you've just seen people like that. It, you know, it's plucked from life. You know, it's not, yeah. it's too exact. There's parts that are like certainly exaggerated and it's, but it's done in a, in a, in a fun way. I don't know, it's just fun. Hmm. All right, I'll get it. <laughs> you don't have to, uh, but no, I was on the I was on the fence. I, but hearing you talk about it, it's like, and I, I was not a I could not skateboard, but I always kind of envy people that that did. It even has a Tony Hawk quote on the front. Hmm. <laughs> anyway, nice. blurb, I should say. Ah, I'm sold. I'm sold on it. Hmm. Remender's taking all my money. <laughs> Giant generator is his, uh, what do you call it? Um, I forgot the name of that, but that's like his, he has like a, an insignia. That's a t- or, hmm. I don't know. I can't remember. It's like sub. It's, it's not a, it's like imprint. Thank you. <laughs> hmm. I'm thanking myself for, for remembering. <laughs> nice. Imprint. Imprint, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sold. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, so my pick of the week. I don't think anyone would be surprised, and I try try to talk myself out of picking this because I picked the opposite book. I think a week or two ago, which is uh, the Six Fingers number four. And I realized that I read this out of order. So I'm, I should have read this before the left hand number five, but it is what it is. It's still tied together. I wish I wish I really wish I would have read it in order because there are events that happen. It still had, it was still need to see how things overlapped, but it is what it is. Uh, So this is the perspective of the killer. The left hand is, is the perspective of the detective who is trying to catch the killer and what's tr- throughout the series you get the feeling that there's more it's this is more than a cat and mouse detective looking for a serial killer kind of story there's more to it than that but you're not really sure how or what's different about it you just know that there are things that happen that are off and you, you know that something else is going on i won't spoil it for you of course but I'm so impressed with what they've done with the series, seeing it come to, to, to the conclusion, the way that they're wrapping it all up, and the fact that they've hinted at things, but nothing's been explicitly said. I don't know anyone who could have predicted how the series will wrap up. So I'm, I'm really impressed. I'm, I'm, I love it when someone just kind of swings through the fences and does something bonkers, something different, and it. I am just, I'm so impressed with what they've done with this series and the fact that they overlap each other. Instead of it being one book that we go back and forth with, it's two separate books that overlap. I think that's really great. You can read them separately and or, or alone, but it seems kind of like a, kind of like a missed opportunity, I think, if you do that, because they are coming out together for that, for that reason. But yeah, I am, I just, I love the ideas they're exploring. I love the other mythology they're exploring it's just it's just a great a great book and this you know when i read something like the six fingers of the left hand or even something like, like even something like drawing blood or even something like remote space you see the the chances that these creators are taking you see even world tree you see that these creators are trying something different and new and it may not work 
but they're doing something. They're putting themselves out there. They're putting the ideas out there. And it's not the same stories we've been told for the last 40 or 50 years or longer. So I, I really appreciate that, that they're just going out there and telling the stories they want to tell and hoping it connects with some readers. So eat whether I enjoy a book or not, especially the, the indie stuff, the, the creator owned, I still respect that they're doing their thing. So this one's really worked for me. Yeah. Um, and I, I understand, as you said, these, this is a mini series. So this is, a, this is going to be wrapped up, which is another thing that we are, are trending towards liking more. Is it, does it have like more of a supernatural or uh, a horror, as you, um, I would say, like kind of elements in here, or is it more? Because you just you say when you mentioned serial killer, but then I looked up the description is maybe there's more to it. You don't have to tell yeah the details. Okay, yeah, there's a lot more to it, okay. but it is um, horror and yeah. <laughs> you don't want to say. Yeah. yeah okay. But th- it's it's pretty bonkers. But it, yeah. Yeah. I think you've sold me, but I it's pretty far along, so I might have to get the yeah, and, and, trade. Yeah, there's one more issue of the six fingers to go, and then both I think both are done. But the the left hand, the last issue of that series left me with goosebumps. Wow. So yeah. Great. Really neat. So then that'll do it for us this week. I think, uh, so we're, we're coming up on issue 50 or an issue, an episode 50. If you have any questions for us, want to send us a question for us to answer during that, that episode, uh, let us know either you can use it. Uh, you can use the link below in the description to send us a message, or you can find us both on page join, send us a DM, or we do have a club there that you can join to chat with us. We we're reading a lot of different books together. And we are reading The Swamp Thing by Alan Moore. So if you're interested in joining us, I mean, anyone's welcome. And come on and, and join our, our little community of weirdos. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. So yeah, until next week, we will uh, see everyone very soon. Bye-bye now. <laughs>